Ja, hello and welcome to the Spielworks Chat Season 3. My name is Uli Blenemann and I hope you are all well. Hi! <laughs> um, so, hello Chris, good seeing you. And hello Suzanne, that's nice seeing you. I saw your Twitter schedule of, uh, of um, streams that you are doing. Very nice. And hello Mo, hello to Texas. And yeah, happy holidays to all of you. Um, if you have questions and comments today, please put them in the chat window. Um, we have quite a few topics today. So let us start with the Spielworks special deals. Um, if you are interested in them, and a lot involve German localized versions, so it's not for all of you. But if you're interested in them, please check out my website. And these special deals are good till the end of this year. So the URL is over there. And hello, Phil. Spielpunks. Punks not dead. Um, unfortunately, there are a few delays with several Spielworks products. So only arriving in early January, but really early January, is the new Spielworks route and the root river folk in German it is Flussvolk uh, German edition so they should be here in early January and then they will be immediately shipped out to all pre-order people. Arriving later in January are Oranienburger Kanal and Magnet German edition. Wonderful. Um, yeah and wonderful seeing uh, Stefan. Good seeing you and hello to the Netherlands. Hello Hans. Um, so Next topic is what did I play lately? Yeah, I had a little bit of time and I played some uh, games. So I played Flashpoint Point South China Sea. Oops, this is probably better. This is a game by designer Harold Buchanan and published by GMT Games. And hello, Nate Tox board games. Good seeing you. So that is the URL for Flashpoint, Flashpoint South China Sea. This is a simple CDG, card-driven game, and it is about the po uh, political situ uh, situation in the South China Sea um, and the rivalry between China and the US. It is for one or two players, has separate rules booklets for the solo version, for the two players version. I've only played the two player version and it is rooted in Twilight Struggle and has really some good ideas and some novel mechanics for uh, card driven games, especially in the uh, in, in scoring and how to use cards. So there are basically four different ways um, to use cards. Yet to me, mm, a lot of the cards are pretty similar or feel similar. And I had hoped for something more, some more depth in the game. Um, but at least the playing time is only one hour, which is very good for a card driven game. And maybe it is just me that I expected a little bit uh, more in it. So it is definitely not a disappointing game, but um, I had hoped for a little bit more. Flashpoint South China Sea. Um, I already mentioned this game before. I've played it again. It is Air, Land and Sea by the wonderful John Perry and published by Arcane Wonders. And of course, this is on the light side um, of games with very simple rules. And it is in the tradition of Schottentotten or Battle Line, where you have several columns and you try to win majorities in a, a majority in a column. But I think Ireland and Sea is better than Battle Line and Schottentotten because although it is very simple, probably even simpler than Battle Lines, that it has very nice twists in this mm, subgenre of uh, games. So you can play cards to the table with their front side, with their back side. You can move them around a little bit later. And um, if you withdraw from a battle because you are thinking that you are losing it, your opponent will guess get less victory points than they would 
when um, uh, when you fight till the end. So very interesting. If you like two player games with direct confrontation, you have to really have to check this let the little package out. And there is also because not everyone is interested in a World War Two um, theme. There is, I think, now a fantasy setting for this game also available. Um, yeah, let me briefly check the uh, comments. <laughs> it is a very flat game. Uh, Flashpoint probably nothing you can kick over while playing. Very good. Yeah, well, um, it's a German version of uh, John Company in time. So far, yes, but... <laughs> I've seen so many delays. I've experienced so many delays. It is still, it is much better than in 2021, the international shipping and transport situation, but it's still not to, back to normal. So we have to wait a little bit uh, more. And then I can confirm that John Company uh, German edition is in time. And let me also put in the URL of Airland and C, so from Board Game Geek. So here you go. And Hans is confirming the fantasy version of Airland and C is called Critters at War. Nice subtitle. Um, I also played Reese Arcana by Tom Lehman, published by Sandcastle Games. Recently, I had the game here since 2019, but like so many other games, I never played it. Um, I never touched it. And this is a URL show here, I guess, but I think I never put down that um, URL to the game. Sorry, so Race Arcana, Tom Lehman, but you'll find it easily on uh, BGG there I think there's also an expansion I just played the base game and um, to my mind it works really very nicely it is a race up to 10 points and it um, speeds up considerably after game round two or three but yet it did not really grab me graphics are fine everything is fine Tom Lehman is a wonderful um, designer and in Race Arcana, you try to optimize a lot. You're getting resources and buy more stuff. And your deck of cards is also very limited. And um, everything works. It is nice, but really not for me. There's also already, uh, thank you, Natox Board Games. There's already the um, confirmation there are two expansions for Race Arcana up to now and it tells you the game is popular. Hello Matze, good seeing you, Spiele vertre uh, Treffen Verteiler. Uh, so that was Race Arcana. And last Friday we had a three player game of Rewife. Designers, Helge Meister, Eilif Svensson, Anna Wermlund and Christian Amundsen Osby. This game is released by Aporta Games and here I think I have the URL. Yeah, and sorry, Tom, for not having the URL to Race Arcana. Um, and Mo is uh, saying, so what do I know? Because Mo, of course, is the wonderful designer of the cost and match the girls. So he's saying he's a fan of Race Arcana. So what do I know? Um, playing Revive, a uh, three-player game. The game, in my opinion, is designed very well, very well but it's also very, very zeitgeistig. Um, I mean, you explore and populate a continent. You're building stuff at the same time. But to me, it has no clear focus. There is so much additional stuff that you immediately forget what you're doing, exploring, populating. You have a character with special abilities, although the differences in character um, abilities are quite minor. You have your own board, each player has their own board, with three resources plus a joker resource that you are constantly tracking. You advance in several categories on this uh, board and you play cards to slots at your player board. 
And if you take a look at um, BGG, you see how popular in rating this game is. There is quite a bit of hype here. It is, again, just me probably, because I think it is overwritten, overdesigned in a big, big way. And um, still, I enjoyed my play of Rewife on Friday, but it was also due to the fact that if you're playing with Odie and with uh, Carsten, you always have a great time. So, um, um, and Revive also has a campaign mode. Um, so there is a lot of variety in, the, um, in your game box, but I fear that during the campaign mode or in the campaign mode, that there is even more stuff uh, introduced. So definitely not my type of game but very, very zeitgeist. And if you compare Revive to Eclipse, you will see a huge difference. So at least I'm having the rules booklet of Eclipse First Edition, Lauter Pelit um, over here, and the URL of Eclipse. Oops. Is here. And you could now also say why why comparing a revive to eclipse. Yeah, well, um, I think you can do so, and I will tell you in in a, in a half a minute. So first, I haven't played Eclipse First Edition, which came out in two thousand eleven, if I'm not mistaken, in years, and we played only the base game of this first edition. Um, Mechanically, Eclipse is pretty simple, yet offers a ton of depths and tells a story, something that Revive simply does not do, at least outside of the campaign mode. And like in Revive, you explore, you upgrade your game engine. Here you upgrade your, your uh, spaceships, but the parts fit together so much better. Uh, than in Revive. Of course, and this is what I mean by zeitgeistig, Revive has very few random elements. Yeah, you flip over cards and you, there is some uh, random stuff in there. You flip over tiles, but the tiles are not that different. But here in Eclipse, you have um, way more random stuff. The tiles you are exploring are really very different in value. So you could be unlock, uh, uh, lucky. And Eclipse has direct confrontation. Combat is via dice. Yeah? It is not totally uh, total luck because you are upgrading your ships. But if the dice hate you, you are in trouble. So this is different. Um, and of course, there is a lot more interaction in Eclipse. You could play the whole game in your corner of the uh, universe, um, but um, maybe there is direct confrontation with a neighbor. And um, in Revive, most of the time you puzzle for yourself. So um, these are the differences. And there are also expansions. I have one over there. Over, no, there, no, over there. Um, and I think there is a second uh, expansion for um, the first edition. And of course, there's a huge second edition of Eclipse, which came out a couple of years. But I have the first edition. I think uh, this is um, enough. So Eclipse, highly recommended. So I like it a uh, lot. And... Not, not Tox is also a fan of Reza Arcana, so you see, what do I know? Uh, listen to these uh, knowledgeable uh, people here. Um, and Mo is saying, we are right. Yeah, I fear you are right. Um, <laughs> and at Essen, I bought a total of uh, three games. Um, I bought 11 unplayed, I bought uh, Heat unplayed, and I had pre-ordered and was able to pick up... Um, War of the Ring, the card game by um, Ares Games and designed by Ian Brody, who has done before the Quarter Master General on a Quarter Master General series of games. 
Um, first, I have to say I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings fans. I like Lord of the Rings. I'm not the biggest fans. But I'm still interested in Lords of the Rings. And the card illustrations are fantastic. I think I may be, again, um, um, I may be wrong. Um, I think they are from the board game. The War of the Ring board game, but maybe I'm mistaken. I haven't uh, checked. Um, yet gameplay in War of the Ring with battlegrounds and paths is, in my humble opinion, not that exciting. I've played card games that grabbed me much, much more. And I think, and this of course is a problem with limited time, if you play War of the Ring more often, that the game becomes better and better. But after my single play of yesterday, I have basically no incl inclination to revisit War of the Ring and uh, the card game. So it is too bad, but this is uh, simply the nature of the beast if you have lots of um, games. And also, I played with just a single other player, so we played with two. And um, the card game is for two to four players. And the standard scenario is uh, scripted basically for four players. So it may be much better with a full table of four players. But it is what it is. Not the best game um, in my opinion. So Hans is saying air, land and sea, spice, slice and supplies. You see air, land and sea, second... Uh, 2.0 published in 2022. So I have to check uh, this one uh, out. Uh, thank you for mentioning uh, this. Airline at Sea, Spies and Lies and Supplies. So that's the title of uh, the expansion, no, of the 2.0 version of the game published in 2022. Interesting. So thank, uh, thank you for mentioning this. And something else, I recently thought a lot about CDG, so card-driven games, and coin games, and why I like CDGs much better than coin games. And, well, to me it is simply the ludic element in card-driven games. You have a full hand of cards when it is the start of the game round, like in a lot of traditional card games, Two, and when it is your turn, you decide which of your cards you are playing, plus you decide how you are playing it, for which of the um, various values, could be for the event, for operations points, for replacements, for scoring or what else. So there is a lot of decision making with each single gameplay, and this is exciting in my opinion. In a coin game, this, this ludic element is completely missing. There, all players see on the game board, on the table, a single card, and there is a slight glimpse into the future. So you are seeing a second card, and you can check this one um, out. And Volko, the original serious designer of coin, was very clever doing so because this reduces complexity a lot and the coin series is not really simple. Because when you are having a full hand of card, it is difficult to, to decide in which order you are playing your hand of card. Um, you need to digest all the info on all your cards and also deciding for what purpose you are playing the card. Again, operations, events and all the other stuff is also not easy. But yet, for me, this makes card-driven games so exciting. And this is why CDGs are my favorite genre in a game. So, yeah, CDGs and coins. But, again, switching topics, let us talk about Elon Musk. No, I won't go into details why he is a major idiot. So, um, but I lay, uh, left Facebook um, several years ago and now I 
think I have to leave Twitter too. I do have a Mastodon account for many, many years, but have never used it. And maybe I'll find it, otherwise um, I will create a new one. And yes, this is very different from Twitter, which is so easy to use and which is comfortable in a lot of ways and which needs um, and which allows you to um, connect with all the world. So very easy. Um, and I think the future will mean that there is more fragmentation uh, going on. It is maybe um, going back to the um, old days in a way with mails and maybe one or two other channels. But uh, I think I can't stand Elmo any longer. So it's very difficult. Uh, but before I'm leaving Twitter, could be that I'm leaving Twitter at the end of this year, I will give you lots of advance info and advance notice where you'll find me. So that was the last but one um, thing for today. And the last one is this today, right now, is the last episode of the Spielworks chat. I started on April 27, 2020, so two and a half years um, ago during the pandemic. So I wanted to stay in touch with uh, people. And till the beginning of this year, so till early 2022, I streamed weekly. I think um, in 21, I had 50 streams, weekly streams out of 52 weeks. And um, early this year, I switched to bi-weekly, although I often um, streamed weekly uh, also in this year. And I presented Spielworks and industry news and then added also fantastic guests to the show, which gave a ton of insight and which I loved. Um, so there is there were Emma Larkins, there were, was Elizabeth Hargrave, there was Mandy Hutchinson, Ben Maddox, Stephen Buenacore, the wonderful Isaac Chalef, Matthias Karma, Jeff Engelstein, Wolfgang Lütke. That is a wonderful episode about the history of TM Spiele and Cosmos. So there's a ton of insight in this one. There was Mark Herman, there was Matthias Notch, etc., etc., etc. Drew Worley, of course. Uh, so, um, and I'm missing a lot. You can check out on my YouTube channel uh, all the episodes. So they are listed on my uh, YouTube channel. And the interaction with you, with the viewers here, why are the comments was also wonderful. So I love this. And I still love doing streams, but not on a regular basis anymore. So what does this mean? So there will be future Spielworks streams. However, only when I think there are major news from Spielworks or from the industry, or definitely there will be also a stream in advance of the games release from Spielworks, for sure. There will be also designers interviews and all this stuff, but not on a regular basis. And it's, it won't be called Spielworks chat anymore. Um, of course, doing them on an irregular basis will result in very few live viewers, but I'm not concerned it, at all. It is your quality here and not the quantity that I'm looking um, forward uh, to. So this is not a concern to me. And um, there may be also some streams with hardly any advance notice where I'm playing a video game or where I'm stream from a convention. So could also be. Let, let me simply see how I do this. Yeah. It wasn't a very exciting ride to do this weekly and bi-weekly. I will stay in touch with you. If you would like to reach me right now, the best way is either still via Twitter or via my um, mail address, which is uli at spielworks.de. That is uli at spielworks.de. And thank you all very much. It was my pleasure. 
And uh, let me close by doing my standard uh, sentence here, support the Ukraine. Um, it is today the 300th day of war. So the war of Russian aggression is in its 300th day. Unbelievable. We are reaching winter. Each country has info on how you can support the Ukrainian people. Maybe you want to directly um, do this um, towards the Ukraine, but you can do this also in your country, I'm sure. You just have to check this a little bit. And we will meet here next year for sure. And um, let me really close by looking into the comments and then with my final sentence. So, let me see. There are a couple of comments. Uh, Blue Dane 7, good seeing you. I will miss the chat. Thanks for the good times, uh, Uli. Yeah, and um, yeah, thank you all for your nice uh, comments here. This is really very nice. Uh, also, Stefan, Matze, all the others. Von Strubel, <laughs> one of the best uh, names here. So again, good seeing you. Merry Christmas in advance to all of you. Yes. Let me close uh, by this. Thank you all very much. Bye bye. Merry Christmas, whatever you are celebrating. Happy holidays. Have a great time. We will meet here, as I said, next year. Okay, bye-bye.